Let the record re reflect that we have reconvened with all members present. Please rise for Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing after the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, Please remain standing for a moment of silence. This past week, Madison lost Joe Shirlanzio, who over 40 years ago, with his brother-in-law Dominic Romanelli, opened the second pizzeria in town, which is now Romanelli's Italian Eatery. It evolved from a small storefront operation on Main Street to the restaurant in Lincoln Place, and it was their investment in the property in what was then Lincoln Garage, for many of us will remember, that really revitalized the eastern end of Lincoln Place. And Joe, for so many years, has been so generous to the organizations in Madison. And for those that ever go through lunch, they're always ready to uh, share a, uh, suggestions on how, to, how we can do things better in Madison. He will truly be missed. And let's have a moment of silence and thought for Joe and his family, his wife, Mary Lou, his loving mo mother, Aurora, Shalanzio, son Joseph, two daughters, Melissa and Andrea. And with all, and also his, the Romanelli's families and friends. Thank you. All right, uh, we did not uh, discuss the executive uh, minutes, but assuming there are no corrections or changes that are substantial, we will uh, take a, entertain a motion. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <clears throat> Welcome. Coming down shortly for a couple of presentations, but a couple other announcements. Um, this past uh, Saturday, in the raindrops was the uh, Little League and uh, girls softball parade commemorating the opening of a, yet another season. Uh, Bob Landry and I uh, led the parade ahead of the uh, very uh, vocal and uh, spirited uh, girls softball uh, young ones that uh, especially going through the overpasses enjoyed uh, the, the echo. <laughs> um, the raindrops did not scare away the, uh, the players and certainly not the crowd either. And we, they had estimated about 600 Little Leaguers, about 300 uh, girls softball players. And in addition to recognizing the start of another season, I presented a proclamation recognizing Little League's 65th year in Madison. They started in 1952. They brought back many of the uh, previous coaches from many years to uh, recognize their work over the years. On... Um, May 22nd, our second meeting in May, we'll have a combined meeting with the Downtown Development Commission and we'll be presenting the uh, Downtown Revitalization Study done by Urbanomics and that'll be eight o'clock here. And that will be outside of uh, any uh, ordinances with hearings, that will be the only agenda item that evening. So we'll be able to extend um, and dedicate time for that topic. So again, that is the May 22nd meeting. My lesson learned today is don't eat a piece of crumb cake before you have to present a proclamation. <laughs> <laughs> so 
I am very thirsty all of a sudden. It was, it was a good piece of crumb cake from CJ's. <laughs> Can I have Harriet McCarter and Allison Kentos please come forward? This proclamation and our uh, next presentation are somewhat connected. The Week of the Young Child, April 24th to 28th, 2017. Whereas the Week of the Young Child was first established in 1971, recognized in early childhood years, lay the foundation for children's success in school and later in life. Whereas the purpose of the Week of the Young Child is to focus on the attention on the needs of young children, their families, and to recognize early childhood programs and services that meet those needs. And whereas the FM Kirby Children's Center and the Northwest Chapter of New Jersey Association for the Education of Young Children and other local organizations in conjunction, in conjunction with the National Association for the Education of Young Children are celebrating the Week of the Young Child, April 24th through 28th, 2017. And whereas these organizations are working to improve early learning opportunities, including early literacy programs that can provide a foundation of learning for young children, and whereas teachers and others who make a difference in the lives of young children in the borough of Madison deserve thanks and recognition, and whereas public policies that support early learning for all young children are crucial to young children's futures. Now, therefore, I, Robert H. Conley, the mayor of Borough of Madison, on behalf of the governing body, hereby proclaim April 24th through 28th, 2017 as a week of the young child and encourage all citizens to make a good investment in early childhood education in our community. A copy for each of you. Yeah. Yeah. Alice, would you like to say a few words? Sure. And supporting early childhood education not only supports children and preschool programs, but also supports the future of the community. So in proclaiming this for the community, it supports your future as well. So thank you, Mayor. And Harriet. To echo Allison's sentiments on behalf of the Kirby Children's Center, um, I'd like to thank Mayor Conley and the Borough of Madison for supporting and acknowledging the uh, work that we do and the importance of early childhood education. Uh, the work that we do really truly lays the foundation for, um, in mind, body, and spirit for all that the children get from the great schools that we have here. And more importantly, it enables them to go on as our future citizens to lead balanced, happy, and fulfilling lives. So thank you very much. Thank you, and thank you for all you do. Okay. Owen Armstrong, please come forward, and all the DDC members, thank you for bringing your father along. So, Owen is up here for a special reason because a week from this Saturday, you will be seeing Owen's artwork on about a thousand t-shirts in downtown Madison. As you know, every year as part of May Day, we have a contest where the students in our schools design what will be on the shirts. And so this year, we have Owen's great work. <laughs> Truly does show what May Day is all about. Not to put you on the spot, Owen, would you like to tell us about your picture? Uh, <laughs> you have a little rain there and some garden tools. Is that um, I looked on the internet and Earth, I looked up Earth Day, and uh, most of them were flowers, so I drew a flower. Excellent. Okay, yep, there we go. Okay. Because Owen, you're going to be on TV and, uh, and speaking on the internet that you can go to Rosenet in a couple of days and click on the link and you'll be able to see yourself. So thank you for the great job on this piece of art. And I'm looking forward to wearing this on May Day and add it to my collection of great May Day shirts. So we will see you there. Great job. Okay. 
Congratulations. Congratulations. Okay, well, photo up. Reports from uh, committees, Public Works and Engineering, Ms. Vitale. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I want to give a report from uh, Shade Tree uh, Commission. Uh, DPW has started the annual spring planting of 105 street trees. Uh, residents have been notified via mail, location markings, and door hanger notifications. Uh, Drew and Madison are co-sponsoring co a free tree seedling on the New Jersey State Tree Recovery Campaign. Seedlings of various tree species will be offered to residents on May 1st, 2 to 4 and 5 to 6 p.m. in front of the Drew Athletic Center. Extra seedlings will be available for Madison residents as part of the Arbor Day, May Day celebration in front of Barrow Hall on May 6th. Um, they also received this uh, really great honor. It's in recognition of 10 years of participation in Tree City USA Growth Award uh, Program. So Madison, New Jersey has been named a Sterling Tree City USA, and that's quite an honor for, um, for the town. Very unusual, too. Um, now, from uh, DPW, who are always very busy this time of the year, uh, they've had a lot of vehicle maintenance, um, you know, the, the mowing, the, the field equipment all has to be serviced and taken care of. Uh, all the dugouts have been repaired and repainted, the benches painted in the parks. Um, they're on full mowing operations. They're striping various fields as the, as the per schedule for the games. All the benches has been put out in downtown area and they installed new fencing at Dodge uh, Field for uh, baseball. Um, you may see the sewer department, they're out replacing manholes for the paving that's going on, and that work is being done in-house rather than contracted out. They actually um, put down 15 tons of black topping throughout the borough um, to take care of those nice big holes that we got this winter. Um, they, uh, the road, the sewer department's been working with the road department, and they completed 36 of the seven 70 manhole replacements. Um, they are always doing markouts for public service, and um, they, uh, they are meeting with engineer and contractor for inspections of the Treadwell pump station. Um, from engineering, uh, the Madison DPW has been um, busy replacing, and this is a little redundant, but I'll, I'll say it because Bob wrote it. Um, resetting as many as 70 manhole covers on, on roads in preparation for resurfacing. The mill and overlay program includes Fairwood Road, Kings Road, Maple, Redmond Drive, Oxford, Prospect, Frail, Lorraine, Linden, West End Avenue, and one half of Britton Street and uh, Dean Street. Cefeli and Sons uh, Contracting will, be, will begin work on the 2017 road construction work this week. And that will include Bellevue Avenue, Tracy Lane, Howell Street, Locust uh, Park Lane, Lathrop Avenue, and Gibbons Place. Initially curb and sidewalk work associated with the resurfacing program and water main replacement on Locust, Howell, and Gibbons will be also <coughs> completed. Um, all statewide in Inc. has been replacing all the si uh, signage that goes along with that resurfacing. So, Mayor. Thank you. Public safety, Mr. Landrigan. Thank you, Mayor. From the Madison Fire Department, during the month of March, the fire department responded to 26 general alarms, 17 still alarms, 18 investigations, and 39 medical calls for a total of 100 calls for assistance in March. Total calls for January through March is 308. On Friday, March 31st, four Madison firefighters, along with firefighters from 
Picatinny, Mars Plains, and the training staff at the Mars County Fire Academy worked and trained with the manufacturer of the live burn building to better understand how it works and to learn how to train more safely and effectively within the building. On Saturday, April 1st, the Madison Fire Department hosted and participated in a training course entitled Firefighter Bread and Butter Operations. Fire firefighters were taught safety and survival skills, vent, enter, and search tactics, as well as hose advancement and forcible entry techniques. On March, on Monday evening, April 10th, half of Madison's firefighters attended live fire training at the Morris County Fire Academy. Firefighters went through a series of fire scenarios in the burn building, consisting of a basement fire, second floor fire, and first floor fire. The other half of the department will be attending a similar training session in September. Florham Park Volunteer Fire Department provided coverage in Madison during this training. The Madison Volunteer Ambulance Corps provided an ambulance and a crew at the fire academy during the training, which was required for all live bird training evolutions. In the beginning of April, five firefighters completed the, a 12-hour course 13 EMS class, which is required for EMT certification. On Easter Sunday, April 16th, around 1 p.m., Matt, the Madison Fire Department was dispatched to assist the Florham Park Fire Department at the scene of a residential structure fire at 21 Parker Court. No one was at, ho at home during the time of the fire, and there were no injuries. Damage was confined to the garage. Madison Fire Department was back in quarters around 2.15 in the afternoon. On Sunday, April 22nd, around 12.40 p.m., the fire department, along with many other Morris County departments and agencies, responded to a commercial fire at, 22, at 222 New Road in Parsippany. A fire was burning in the roof insulation that lies between the steel roof decking and the roof membrane itself. Falling fire also ignited areas within the large warehouse and office building. Madison Fire Department was back in quarters around 3.30 p.m. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Finance and Borough <coughs> Clerk, Ms. Bailey. Um, thank you, Mayor. From the Clerk's Office, in anticipation of the June 6 primary election, the Clerk's Office will remain open for late-night voter registration on May 16, 2017, until 8 p.m., Applications for vote by mail ballots and voter registration forms are available in the borough clerk's office or online at morriselections.org. And from the finance department, um, the audit committee met today with the administrator, CFO, and members of the auditing firm Nisavaccia. The committee discussed financial internal controls, audit timetable, and other related matters. From the tax collector, uh, a reminder that second quarter property taxes are due on May 1st. Also, the tax collector has started work on the 2017 tax sale, which is scheduled for September 12, 2017. First step is working with the utility billing department to make sure all 2016 utility account balances are paid. Utility delinquent notices went out today. Failure to pay your 2016 utility or property tax bill will result in your name being in the newspaper. So get those payments in. Uh, from the utility billing department, administration has been working with the billing software company and will be ready to implement the $1.5 million electric utility dividend starting on Monday, May 1st. Residents will see the dividend as a separate line item on their bill. And a flyer will also be placed in the bills explaining the dividend. The CFO would like to thank Utility Billing Supervisor Donna Carey for all her help with this important project, and I know the Council appreciates it too. And from the Payroll Department, new biometric time clocks will be installed this week in borough buildings. This is another step in improving financial internal controls. It will also help the department heads and payroll department better manage payroll. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Utilities, Mr. Wolkowitz. Thank you, Mayor. The uh, utilities had a particularly uh, busy time recently. In addition to the usual maintenance, uh, which takes a lot of work, uh, they've had some particular issues or one-offs that occupied them since our last meeting. The water department in particular had pre-construction meetings for new water installations at Locust, Hal, Gibbons, and Lathrop. They also had a leak at Drew University, which had to obviously be checked and fixed. 
Uh, the Board of Ed meters at the high school, junior school, Tory and Tory J were replaced. And in addition, um, there were markouts for 43 contractors projects. Doesn't mean 43 contractors, but 43 projects. Um, and as well, uh, in addition to the uh, installations I just mentioned, they've obviously been very busy with the KRE project. As for the electric department, as you may have heard, a truck hit poles on Rosedale Avenue a little while ago, causing a power outage. Our uh, electric utility was, as usual, very quick to respond, had to replace poles, anchors, guy lines, and a bunch of other things, and got us up and running as quickly as they possibly could. Uh, in addition, they had a, a number of maintenance issues, particularly regarding streetlight repairs and service upgrades. Thank you. Thank you. Health, Mr. Rowe. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, this week is National Infant Immunization Week. It's an annual event to promote the benefits of immunizations and improve the health of children two years or younger. Additional information and resources are available at rosenet.org on the health department pages. And a women's health screening event is scheduled for Monday, May 22nd. Appointments are necessary, and they can be made by calling the health department, 973-593-3079, extension 1. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. And community affairs, Ms. Byrne. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. From the Senior Center, Rides for Seniors, the grant-funded senior transportation program is growing. As of April 17th, 106 Tri-Town residents had registered and 65 rides had been taken from April 3rd to the 16th. Response has been good and committee members are visiting local senior groups, housing complexes, and community events to promote the service. The service is also being publicized at area medical facilities where transportation may be a problem for a senior in need of care or a spouse wishing to visit. In addition, the Age-Friendly Stores Initiative is partnering with the Rides Project to promote accessible transportation and walkable downtowns as a way to increase business. The April 19th Spring Luncheon drew 50 people who gathered to honor the 10 volunteer tax counselors who completed and filed federal and state returns for 141 area residents. I was not one of them. <laughs> Looking ahead, we will once again participate in Madison High School's Day of Service on May 19th. Local organizations will meet with the students at lunch hour during the week of April 24th to describe volunteer opportunities in school and around town. The Senior Center is enlisting student help with making and decorating the tea caps for donation to the Carol Simon Cancer Center. The popular Helping Hands project has been resurrected and residents are already signing up for student help with yard work, window cleaning, and other spring projects. Um, this weekend is going to be very busy downtown. On Saturday, we will be celebrating independent bookstore day, uh, with uh, guest readers um, and a guest appearance by Clifford, the big red dog. Um, and then on Sunday, we will be celebrating the close of Turn the Town Yellow, also at Short Stories, uh, from 5 until 8 in the evening. Um, May 11th is the Ladies' Night Out, sponsored by uh, the Madison Chamber of Commerce. It's an opportunity to come downtown, do a little bit of shopping, and put your name in the hat for some exciting gifts donated by local businesses. And then finally, we have, of course, put in a plug for Saturday, May 6th, which is May Day. We need volunteers. Uh, you can go to, you can contact Lisa Ellis at madisondc.org um, and uh, sign up and get one of these great t-shirts to add to your collection. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. <coughs> Communications and petitions. Yes, your council received two communications and email received April 21st from Alice Allison Spatola of Rose Avenue regarding the welcoming community resolution and an email received April 21st from Gwen Packard of Berkeley Heights regarding parking along Main Street. Thank you. And now we're on the first of two invitations for discussion from the public. This is limited to items on the our agenda discussion, which is the 
2017 farmers market or any resolutions that are listed under the consent agenda. If you're going to comment on any of those, you can step up to the lectern, state your name, your address, write the same on the clipboard, uh, then state the uh, topic, either the uh, farmer's market or which resolution you're speaking on. And uh, after the last meeting, the attorney reminded me that the need to be consistent with the uh, time limits, as has been the practice. I usually have allowed people to go a little past the three minutes, so if you are speaking, on either of the sessions today, at three minutes, I'll give you a one-minute warning, and at four minutes, you'll be, uh, should be finished, and that will be the uh, process, so we're, we are consistent. So with that, anyone wishing to speak on the agenda items, please step forward. Seeing none, I close this part of the meeting. And 2017 Farmer's Market. Maureen, you want to start that up? or? Yeah, well, I mean, the market um, has been growing over the last few years. It seems to have found a permanent home um, on Central Avenue between Main Street and Cook. Um, we will be getting um, the same three farmers back and an exciting um, mix of vendors, including Madison's own farmer, Tracy Palmer, uh, who... Uh, raises goats on Park Avenue and makes wonderful soap out of them. So uh, the market is uh, slated to start the first Thursday in June and go through the second Thursday in October, which is an extension of two weeks, which will allow us to all stock up on apples and pumpkins in anticipation of the fall. Um, and uh, once again, Lisa Ellis and Don Hoover will be leading the charge along with uh, help from our interns. And so the differences for this year in the resolution include the um, sidewalk change. Um, it, reflects the, it reflects the changes to the ordinance that we made to allow outdoor dining yep. and signage to promote the businesses and the market itself longer time and the longer time any questions or comments from the council <clears throat> okay, looking forward to uh, June 1st this is on the uh, consent resolution 140 because of the short time in between meetings the ordinances that were introduced at the last uh, meeting have a hearing at our next meeting so we have no ordinances for hearing tonight and we move on to invitations for discussion and this is one you may speak on any topic, but again, <clears throat> reinforcing what I've just mentioned, that at three minutes, I will uh, give you the one-minute warning. At four minutes, we'll stop. I will not st start the clock until you have finished stating your name and address. So if you have a long name and a long street, that won't be held against you. Under those guidelines, anyone wishing to speak, please step forward up to the lectern. <laughs> My name is Jesse Esposito. I live at 14 Community Place, Madison, New Jersey, apartment number two. Sorry. Okay. Um, the reason I'm here tonight is to discuss the parking situation on Community Place at the end where the housing authority is. We have, uh, I have been filing complaints with the local police department here in Madison and the DPW. Uh, into getting a restricted parking area over there. We have commuters, people from housing parking there day in and night, all night long, um, blocking the roadway for emergency vehicles can't, have, can't get down, plows can't get down, nobody can do anything on that street. Um, it, it's creating too much of a hazard situation. So um, in working with Madison Police Department and DPW, we did decide that the one side of the street, um, what they're, they're going to try to enforce is a no parking area because it just creates too much of a mess. Um, and uh, on the other side of the street, limit it to three to four areas of parking because they were blocking driveways so people couldn't get in and out of the driveway. Um, have been discussing it with them for the last month, so I just wanted to bring it to, to the attention of the town. It is a serious problem. We have commuters 
you have the housing authority who people don't want to pay for parking are just parking on the street and, and business owners, employees for businesses are just parking on the street. So I would like to see that addressed further. Um, yellow lines put in, no parking signs put up, and you know, the situation you know, changed. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So uh, follow up. Um We'll uh, work with Joe Longo as far as uh, ordinance come forward on the p p recommendation on the one side uh, parking. The other is, uh, since we now have the four hour, what well, we've mentioned about the four hour parking ban, that enforcement is passive. So in some neighborhoods where it's not an issue, we're not gonna be ticketing, but neighborhoods where it is, residents can certainly um, call. So we will uh, make sure that is being done. And the other uh, thing which might be helpful is, as we've done on some streets, is um, paint the limit, parking limit signs, uh, lines, right, up driveways and so on, so people have clearly defined parking areas. Right. Okay. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Anyone else? Hi, Kathy Doherty. I own 14 Community Place. Um, I just want to reiterate everything Jesse has said. Um, we do have issues. The plows can't get down. Um, you can't even get a small car sometimes down the street. Um, and my tenants, and there's, there's three driveways, two of which I own, and one um, Taylor's own. And sometimes you can't even pull in or out of the driveway because people are, are blocking it. And we, we have followed commuters to the train and... Um, a lot of people just illegally parking. But um, we did talk to uh, Mr. O'Brien of the DPW, and uh, he was very encouraging um, to get things straightened out. So we, we hope it goes through. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone else wishing to be heard? Council, my name is uh, Tom Abruzzo. I'm from uh, 52 Maple Avenue in Madison. Um, not to beat a dead horse in the mouth over a topic that's been discussed for a long period of time, but uh, I'm here to discuss the uh, Resolution 57-2017, the so-called um, Welcoming Community Resolution. Uh, like most of the residents in town, I was fairly unaware of uh, the process and things that had taken place and when it, and when it took place until the town held this special um, council meeting uh, earlier this month, um, which I uh, heard about at the last minute. I went and, and went ahead and attended. Um, following that meeting, I went out and did a lot of research on the whole process, uh, and quite frankly, I was um, uh, very frustrated uh, by the whole process and how things worked out. Did research, took a look at the minutes from the last council meeting in January. No discussion on the potential for an adoption of a resolution. Um, didn't see any comments about that leading up to that meeting. Uh, went back to when the campaign took place uh, last fall. No discussion about bringing out an adoption for a resolution. Um, all of a sudden, we get this resolution, we read it, very serious commentary within there, within, within, the, within the document. Um, quite frankly, if you read it fairly closely and you see the concerns of what's going on within the federal government, you look to see that um, that, that, that document as it's written could clearly put us and designate the town of Madison as a sanctuary community or sanctuary city. Uh, something I don't think most of the residents of this town really want to get ourselves into. Um, ultimately, there is no definition of what constitutes a sanctuary city, sanctuary community. But if you do read online, definitions state a sanctuary city or community is a city that limits its cooperation with the national government in order to help people who are in this country illegally avoid deportation. Um, Based on uh, a number of the uh, points in the resolution, particularly points two, seven, and eight, it seems like we're going down that path. And uh, we're in a position where designations are gonna come out again, and we wanna see Madison's name on a list of names like Newark, Camden, Jersey City, Asbury Park. I'm not sure we wanna go down that path. 
Um, if you want to debate me on the level of the designation, as I'd asked in the email I sent to you all last night, I'd like to know what the legal basis is for us being, for Madison being able to make a comment, being able to make a comment, the second bullet point in the, F, the FAQ, Welcoming Community Resolution, that would state that Madison is not a sanctuary city. Um, uh, I asked via email. You don't want to provide it here. I would, I would request that we get something. I, I, I received something in writing that I can share with a number of the other residents that are very concerned about this. Um, and one, one minute. Okay. Uh, again, very concerned about the process. Uh, I looked at other towns, other towns that have adopted uh, similar ordinances as well. They actually went through processes where they had a town meeting, where they had a council meeting. They discussed that they might be doing this. They then had another meeting and they ultimately adopted something. Um, you might want to look at uh, a, a resolution that was adopted by another town here, Leonia, New Jersey. Um, I have a copy of it here right now if anyone's interested in looking at it. Similar, similar structured resolution, but with different language. A little bit more compromising for the various points. It makes your statements that yes, we are a welcoming community but does not make a statement that we are here and in conflict with the federal government. which I don't think that is a principles that we want to be sharing with our children and our process is that we are, that we are up and against the federal government. All right. Thank you. So, Time. Thank you. Appreciate your uh, input on that. And uh, as been mentioned on the April 3rd meeting that uh, conversations will continue um, with all the work that was done that evening and, and the great turnout from our residents. I'm Judy Campbell. I live at 54 Sampson Avenue here in Madison. Um, I just want to respond to the previous spoke, uh, uh, speaker and say that um, I understand his concern. However, I think that the mayor and um, others in town have done a great deal to settle that issue. Um, and I do think that the work that's being done by the mayor with the, with the committee members is really going to be quite inclusive and won't be that much, much of a problem. I also think it's important to state that given the discussion at the borough council meeting when it was the, the um, people who were feeling against it raised the issue, um, and then there was the special meeting, um, I think the special meeting was attended overwhelmingly by people who supported the welcoming committee, um, the welcoming uh, uh, proclamation, rather than those who were against it. Um, so I think we should definitely go on record that so far it appears that the people in Madison actually support it fairly wholeheartedly, um, and uh, we should keep that in mind as we go forward. Thank you. Anyone else wishing? Yep. Sorry. That's all right. Hi, Denise Katz, 24 Parkside Ave. I uh, wrote a letter to the mayor and the council thanking them for their leadership and their decision making in issuing the Welcoming City Proclamation. I think I attended the April 3rd discussion. I, I agree with Judith. I think the majority of the attendees were for the proclamation. Hmm. And a number of people that questioned, that were sort of on the fence and questioned, why do we need this? I think as the discussion continues and as the letters to the um, town paper continue, I think it tells us this is why we need the proclamation. We are a welcoming community. We need to remind everyone that we're a welcoming community. And again, thank you to the mayor and the council for showing us leadership in this issue. Thank you very much. Thanks. Anyone else wishing to be heard? See none. Close this part of the meeting. And thank you all. And a, again, a, a reminder that the, the conversations will continue. We'll be uh, over the next uh, few weeks setting up uh, subcommittees, working on things. And um, as was mentioned at last meeting, uh, I've had correspondence with uh, a resident at the last meeting, uh, trying to set up a time for those that are, have concerns about the welcome resolution that we can sit down with our attorney and have those concerns addressed. Because it is important that everyone un understands uh, what, 
what the resolution is and what it does and what it doesn't do. And moving on to uh, int introduction of ordinances. Will the clerk please read the statement? Ordinance is scheduled for first reading, have a hearing date set for May 8, 2017. All will be published in the Madison Eagle, posted on the bulletin board, and made available to members of the public requesting copies. All right, what uh, we're going to do uh, a little different today is uh, these, all these ordinances are related to capital expenditures that were part of the capital budget. I will have the clerk, um, maybe the clerk and I will alternate reading the ordinances by title. Yeah. So we'll, we'll, uh, you can, you can, we'll do the tap if you need, a, need me to jump in. Um, so all the uh, ordinances will be moved in one uh, motion. At our next meeting, when they have a hearing, they will be grouped by funding source. So general capital will be, have a hearing and the various other uh, capital uh, sources would have separate hearings. So with that, I call up the ordinances for first reading. I ask the clerk to read said ordinances by title. Following ordinances are for consideration. Ordinance 18, 2017, ordinance <coughs> of the Borough of Madison, appropriating $75,000 from the General Capital Improvement Fund for architectural services for a replacement of the roof at the Madison Public Library. Ordinance 19, 2017, is an ordinance of the Borough of Madison, appropriating $30,000 from the Electric Capital Improvement Fund for the purchase of a pad mount transformer for B Well Water Pump Station. Ordinance 20, 2017, it's an ordinance of the Borough of Madison appropriating $35,000 from the General Capital Improvement Fund for the purchase of integrated uh, C SCBA thermal imaging cameras. Ordinance 21, 2017 <clears throat> is an ordinance of the Borough of Madison appropriating $20,000 from the General Capital Improvement Fund for replacement of an emergency backup generator at the Midwood water tank. Ordinance 22, 2017 is ordinance of the Borough of Madison appropriating $18,000 from the General Capital Improvement Fund <coughs> for the purchase of a fire hose and fittings. Okay. 23, 2017 is an ordinance of the Borough of Madison appropriating $18,000 from the General Capital Improvement Fund for the purchase and installation of snow roof guards at the public safety complex. Ordinance 24, 2017 is ordinance of the Borough of Madison appropriating $15,000 from the General Capital Improvement Fund for the purchase of rescue stabilization struts. Ordinance 25, 2017, ordinance of the Borough of Madison appropriating $12,000 from the General Capital Improvement Fund for the purchase of low pressure airbags. Ordinance 26, 2017 is an ordinance of the Borough of Madison appropriating $12,000 from the General Capital Improvement Fund for the purchase of four new sets of firefighter turnout gear. And Ordinance 27, 2017 is an ordinance of the Borough of Madison appropriating $8,000 from the General Capital Improvement Fund for the purchase of portable trash pumps. Mayor, I move ordinance 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, and 27. I'll second it. Council discussion or anyone that needs to be pulled, pulled out separately. Seeing none, roll. Oh. I was just going to say, I think it's important just to note that these have all been discussed when we discussed the budget. Yes. Question, so. Thank you. Thank you. Roll call vote. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Wolkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rowe? Yes. Ms. Byrne? Yes. <coughs> okay. Consent agenda resolutions. Or please read the statement. The please consent read. agenda resolutions will be enacted with a single motion. Any resolution requiring expenditure is supported by a certification of availability of funds. Any resolution requiring discussion will be removed from the consent agenda. All resolutions will be reflected in full in the minutes. Mayor, I move uh, resolution 139-2017 uh, to resolution 144-2017. I'll second the motion. Any discussion or any that need to be pulled? Roll call vote. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Wolkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rowe? Yes. Ms. Burke? Yes. There is no unfinished business. The approval of vouchers. <clears throat> For the current fund, $3,697,360.88.
General Capital Fund, $15,369.90. Electric Operating Fund, $157,386.06. Water Operating Fund, $25,437.37. Water Capital Fund, $99,879.32. And the Trust, $332.50. The total is three million nine hundred ninety-five thousand seven hundred sixty-six dollars and three cents. Mayor, I move uh, approval of the vouchers. I second it. Discussion. Roll call vote. Mr. Landrigan. Yes. Mrs. Vitali. Yes. Ms. Bailey. Yes. Mr. Wolkowitz. Yes. Mr. Rowe. Yes. Ms. Byrne. Yes. And there is no new business. I move we adjourn. All in favor. Aye. Take a phone out. Almost. Take a photo. 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 Take a